play this a little bit, right? Like, we gotta play this a little bit, even if it's late. It's gotta be done. The, uh, the full-on addiction to this and uh, NHL 2K10 are, are right back there, the golden 360 era. So again, we finished our first season with a 2-10 record, but we are on the verge of potentially being able to lock down a four-star recruit as a one-star school, which should not be possible, but the dream is alive. As insane as it is. Our boy, Kenny Cobbs. We have a decent little lead on Alabama, but it can disappear very fast. Let's go ahead. Schedule the visit for this week. I should have done a little bit more, but it's okay. Smith we're in first for, but it's not by much. Let's put in the effort here. Five weeks to seal the deal. Five weeks to seal the deal and lock down some of these better prospects. Recruits, we'll call them prospects, because let's be honest, I mean, they are this game's version of prospects after all. And then we have one Michael Rogers. Uh, we have other dudes here, a ton of dudes that are uh, able to schedule a visit. So, uh, I mean, that's basically what this time's going to be used for, right? Just get, like, everybody scheduled for a visit. I mean, I'd say as soon as possible. I mean, there's no, really no reason not to. So, Cobbs. Pretty much just sell them on the playing time. It's the best thing we got. Sell them on the playing time. Sell them on the academic prestige. Mr. Parks. Uh, can sell you on the playing time, the proximity to the home, and the academic prestige. Schedule this out with uh, one Graham Barron, another four-star prospect that we might be able to lock down. Sell you on the playing time and the academic prestige. Mr. Jonathan Beck. Let's see what we can schedule for you here, sir. Uh, low importance, that doesn't help, but proximity to home, the academic prestige. It's pretty much all we have is to just be like, well, hey, you, you'll get to play and it's a nice school. It's pretty much all, pretty much we got, you know, all we got going for us, but if it works, ooh. So he's certainly intrigued by the playing time. It's all we can sell him on. Mike Perry. Same thing, schedule you for a visit this week. Just get all these visits over and done with if we can. Above average, average, average. At least we can sell him on more than a, just one thing. David Williams, the pride of Peterborough. What do we got for you? Good old Peterborough. Peterborough, Peterborough. Uh, oof. Uh, let's just sell them on the unknowns because I can't really sell them on much. I'll just go for these. Marquis Stewart. What do we got for you? 99 interest. He is like on the verge of signing. Uh, we will sell him on this, this, and this. Light to the party. What happened with the cliffhanger? Define cliffhanger. What, the four star uh, dude? We don't know yet. It's about to happen. It's about to happen, we hope. We have yet to get an answer. And we gotta schedule this dude for week two. Which is okay, let the lower level dudes uh, get scheduled for next week. Perfectly fine with that. Just get all these visits scheduled. Mr. Alexander. Have you scheduled? I still love that it's Coach Stash. Yeah, Duckman, you had great timing. Mr. Edwards, who I thought at one point would be the best QB we could get. Schedule you for a visit as well. It's not nearly it. Damn. Week two visits. 
Weathersfield, Connecticut. Jason Beverly. Man, imagine if we get the lion's share of these prospects, you know? I mean, this recruitment class has the potential to be absolutely insane. It's just tedious right now to schedule all the visits. And again, so many of these recruits, too, are going to be so important to the New England pipeline for future seasons. So if there's anybody out of New England really off of this recruitment class alone, we're going to have the heads up. A leg up on the competition, you might say. So we're getting into scheduling people now for week three visits. Okay, that's all we had to do. So from there, back to the top, whoever we didn't talk to, we'll quick call, including Mr. Rogers. 83 points, not bad. Uh, Sean Collins is, uh, is new. This was a dude we were gonna try to, you know, hopefully recruit late here. The remaining four-star recruit, let's, uh, Let's throw the salvo out there, as we do. See if we can make any headway here on actually being able to get this guy, which would be sick. I don't have yeah, too many things I can sell him on. He doesn't really care about the school. He doesn't even really care about playing time. Probably cares about going pro, which doesn't benefit us much. Uh, Antonio Gray. Wow, that was awful. Thanks a lot, quick call. Let's see, Nate Bain. 66, it's a little bit better. So I mean you pay, you know you pay a little bit for being lazy, but hey, you do what you gotta do. He cares about his studies. 212, Jesus. There's no way that guy's not gonna sign with us. Essex Junction, Vermont. Love to see it. Alright. That is it for our week one discussions. The moment of truth. Are we locking down a four-star recruit with UMass in our very first offseason? Come on. Come on. Make it happen. God, this sucks having to wait. This sucks having to wait, man. Oh, come on, corn cobs. Corn cobs, huh? Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Parks, Perry, Stewart, Beck, Alexander, all commit to UMass. Four three-star recruits. We don't have word yet about the four stars. But that is a W and a half. And top class is last I knew we were at like 96. Now we're up in the 60th. We're a one-star school, and we're pulling in three-star recruits. Okay, we got a bunch of dudes that we got to work out their uh, visit today. Where are we at? We're still in first for Cobbs. The lead's from like two-something to 680. We might actually get Kenneth Cobbs. And we're second for Mike Smith. Looks like he's going to go to Oklahoma. An A-plus visit for Cobbs. Let's talk to Cobbs here. we got to put in the work. Okay. Playing time. I can promise you that over Bama. Come here instead. Academic prestige. I can't promise you that over Bama, but I can still sell you on it. Pro potential. I mean, I certainly don't have that over Bama, but, you know. Oh, boy. Campus lifestyle. Try to sway the importance. Beautiful. 
Cobbs might be coming to UMass, man. Uh, Mr. Smith, we're now in second. Let's put in a little bit of work, even though I'm pretty sure he's gonna go to Oklahoma. Although we can trash talk the Sooners in two different ways, which is pretty nice. Let's see what happens with old Mike Smith here. Just don't start him in the playoffs. That's an Edmonton Oilers joke. So, got two things we can really sell them on. Rogers were in first four. By how much? Not much, man, at all. Boys State's right there. Let's talk to him. First and foremost, schedule a week three visit. Secondly, try to sway some importance here late because it's pretty much all we can do. We're going to have a harder time locking down Rodgers here. I just think he's much more likely to go to Boise State or Wisconsin. 161's not bad, though. We're in first for Barron by 600. Collins, we're up into fifth. Off the first recruitment effort, we're up into the top five. For Sean Collins as a potential late addition, he is close to bus territory, but he'd still be amazing for us. Cedric Thompson on a soft commit. We got a 900 point lead. He's definitely coming here. Let's see what we can do about Collins. We are about to have a ridiculous recruitment class. Let's see if we can sway importance here on some of these. That's pretty much all we got. What was that? Two successful sways in a row. What the hell are the odds of that? I don't know if we're going to be able to make up the ground because the grades are pretty damn low, man. Alright, Williams, it was a C-plus visit. A lot of uh, A visits there. Parks, Barron, Thompson. Right, let's see, let's schedule the visit here for Bradley. Schedule the visit for Calgary native and Brad Watkins. Well, apparently, I don't know jack shit about. I'm selling him on it being close to home. He's from Calgary, so that's going to go horribly. Uh, Alex Edwards. Not much I can sell him on aside from the academic prestige. The gem, Antonio Gray. I'll schedule you for a visit in week three. Terrell Lewis. A couple of easy calls there. Nothing doing. Jason Beverly. God, man, I want these four-star guys. That would be absolutely insane. Some of these lower-level guys, too, though, a lot of what they're looking for lines up with what we can offer. Maybe not everybody, but first couple of guys. I didn't want to call this guy. Shit. Well, let's try to sway him on proximity to home. Well, still gained 40 out of it. Maybe he's bad at geography and the pitch works. Can you imagine? I mean, well, Canada is right next to the U.S. It's, it's close. Of course it's close. All right, that's everybody except for Doucette. The pride of Londonderry. The pride of Londonderry. All right, everybody else, let's uh, quick call some of these lower level guys that we haven't talked to all that much because we're still in first for them. So maybe, just maybe this works out. Again, these are the players that are more important to the pipeline as opposed to being like, yeah, they're going to be sick for us. Like, no. Pipeline players for us. Mr. Bain, East Hartford, Connecticut. The only thing worse than being from Hartford is East Hartford. All right. Here we go. Moments of truth. We go to week three. 
We locked down a shitload of three-star recruits. Can we lock down more four stars? Is the question. <sighs> oh, come on. If we get a four star recruit, we're switching to a Flyers 2K10 run. And I'll even make a do beam out. Come on. Come on. More three stars, Bradley, Beverly, Lewis, three more three stars added. Ladies and gentlemen, we got them. You know what's great is when you hit the unmute button and you were never muted. It showed us as a two star and then it showed us as a one star. Maybe it's predicting the future. Thanks a lot, mouse. Yeah, you. I'm blaming you. Hit the button. Does nothing. Embarrassing. Embarrassing. Anyway, stop yelling at an inanimate object now for not registering a button click. Anyway, what do we got? 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 That's what I get for not just sneezing in your ears. We're still in first for Cobbs, man. It's gonna happen. It is absolutely gonna happen. Let's quick call him. Another 92 points. Smith, we're in first for. We'll quick call him. That might be a decision I regret, but honestly, it went pretty well. Rogers, same thing. Quick call him. Another 82 points. Schedule his visit. And, uh, oh god. I can do playing time. That's about it. Baron, we're in first four. Quick call this man. 177. Graham Baron's definitely gonna sign. We will quick call Mr. Cedric Thompson. 149 points. Sean Collins. 40. He is the guy I should have talked to, though. That was a mistake because we're in second, but next week should hopefully work out still. Uh, David Williams we'll talk to. What else do we have coming in on a visit here? Brad Watkins we can talk to. All right, there we go. We got somebody else. Let's uh, quick call Mr. Alex Edwards. Uh, Mr. Gray. We'll schedule the visits. Shit. Most I can do is just talk to him about the playing time because we can offer that in spades. <clears throat> Richard Wright. I just have a couple of things I can sell him on. Noah Kane. A plus I can sell him on. Kane should be locked down. He's a one star, so we're not too worried, but still. Uh, Nate Bain is finally ready to schedule a visit after all of this time. He finally decides that, yeah, now is the time to commit to actually taking a visit with us. I can't sell him on much. Javon Young. That's going to go a lot better. Uh, Williams. Schedule the visit for you. See what we can do here. We can be quite successful from the looks of it. Robbie May is here. Schedule you for a visit, sir. It's for next week and then do set as the visit this week. And I uh, can only really sell them on Academic Prestige. Quick column. 
All right, here we go. Heading into week four. Heading into week four. Can we get ourselves a four-star recruit? Come on, man. Come on. Come on. We have so many four-star recruits that we're in first for. Especially someone who'd probably be the greatest UMass quarterback before ever stepping foot on the field. Come on. Thompson, Williams, Williams, Young, Edwards. Two more three-star recruits. We have still yet to see a four-star commit. Two more weeks. In terms of top classes, we're in the top 23 with 19 players having commit so far. I'm a little bit worried about the amount of scholarships we might have thrown out here. I think I might have to drop some of these lower level dudes just to make sure. I'm now officially worried about the amount of scholarships we might have thrown out there. Yeah, because if we brought in 19 people, theoretically, that's all off of scholarships, right? Yeah, we only have four scholarships left. Okay, we have to optimize from here. So we uh, sort by the lowest. Do set. Hate to tell you, we're going to take you off the list. Doesn't mean these guys can't still sign, though. Seth King. Uh, Rob May is tough time to remove that offer from you, but it's got to be done. Mr. Raymond, Nate Bain, even as a three-star, I have no choice but to rescind these offers to these players. Hopefully, some of them still come here, but their uh, their chance at a free ride just went up in smoke because they took way too long. Uh, Sean Collins, we're in first for. But anybody below that, like Watkins has to go. Antonio Gray has to go. Jeremy Carter. I hate to say it, but Maurice Manning. Okay. So we have... I mean, those are obviously the four that we want. I, I like uh, Collins a lot. We battled to get in the first for the guy. But I can't afford to have Collins take away a scholarship from one of those dudes. And I want Rodgers there as a backup to Cobbs. Because, uh, again, it's not a bad idea to get two decent quarterbacks. But then again, we did get another quarterback, didn't we? Yeah, we already got Edwards. Yeah, I guess we'll drop Rodgers. And those will be the, uh, the main four that we hope accept scholarships from this point on. Let's talk to Mike Smith. And see what we can do in terms of some potential shit talking. I can't really sell this dude too much on, uh, you know, too much on anything. But man, we'll see what happens. Not 183. Mr. Collins, now that we're suddenly in first for you. Just keep trying to sway importance on a lot of this stuff. Again, this is another guy where we don't really have too much wiggle room to earn points. 106. Graham Barron. Man, we got to get these four-star guys. It would jumpstart this uh, this rebuild so, so quickly. Looked like I could have shit-talked Boise there, but oh well. We 
only got four scholarships left, which kind of sucks, but I mean, we've already brought in some great players. Come on, Cobbs. The important thing here is that we get Cobbs, clearly. He's got to be the guy. He's got to be. All right, that's it for this week. And again, you know, if you look at uh, all the players that are out there, there are still dudes that'll have interest. Uh, like Rogers, we're still first on his list. We're still first on Watkins and Carter's list. You know, it's like there are a lot of dudes though. Like all the dudes we just dropped. I mean, we're still in first for a lot of them. If not all of them. So, there's still a chance we can end up with those guys. We're just not guaranteed them. At least not to the same level that we, uh, that we were. Come on, heading into the final week. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Just give us cobs, man. Give us cobs. Where is the lamb sauce? Where is the lamb sauce? Did you ever think about that? Did you ever? Come on. Ha! Got him! Come on. Please. None of the four commit. We're still in first. Cobbs is on a soft commit still. Like, come on. It's like he's holding out hope for somebody specific. Like, I don't even know who. Let's talk to Baron. Make the pitch. Academic prestige, we can shit talk him there. Pine Lake, Washington. Take a couple of points off of Boise. Come on, man. 196 point week. Kenny Cobbs. Make yourself a hero, sir. <clears throat> Make yourself a hero. Come to UMass, where you won't be just another star player. You'll be the star player. <sighs> Mike Smith. Who I think would be like our only athlete. Should talk Boise on the academic prestige. Oh man, come on. We need these guys, man. We do, we do. Just how much it's gonna help if we get them under, uh, under a scholarship here. And then Sean Collins, who, uh, it was like a last ditch effort <clears throat> to be able to make a play for this guy. Monte Vista, Colorado. <laughs> so catcher a soft commits, basically they're saying like, yeah, I'm probably gonna go here, but I'm not 100% saying I'm gonna go here. So basically like, hey, if, uh, <laughs> if Alabama comes in for me or LSU, I'm out of here, basically type of thing. They are the hopes for our last four scholarships. We go to signing day. You don't win friends with salad. You don't. Time for my battle cry. <laughs> Blake, we're heading into year two. Come on. Four stars, baby. Four stars. Four stars, four horsemen, four stars. 
The amount of rings Tom Brady had in 2013, 14. Fuck. Boy. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> Two four star recruits and Cobbs. We got Anthony and Bain as well. These two we stripped scholarships from. They still signed. We have signed Mr. Cobbs. Unfortunately, Mike Smith ended up going to Boise. Sean Collins goes to Colorado. But we got two out of the four. And all in all, we put together one hell of a recruitment class, bringing in some top talent, certainly adding to the pipeline effect as well. We brought in a lot of Canadians too, a lot of New England talent, an incredible, incredible recruitment class sees us finish 47th in the nation. Two four-star recruits, 12 three-stars. So, uh, you know, on signing day, obviously, when everyone's signings rolled in, we dropped in quality a little bit. Had we gotten a couple more four-stars, we would have been good, but still, just, just incredible. That is an outstanding recruitment class. And it brings us to the position change period, which always takes a little bit. Just incredible. The wrestler? Oh, man. So first things first. One of these two will become a kicker. 75 for Simon, who was already here, and then John Small, our new recruit. So both dropped by a point. In terms of the accuracy, it should be Simon as our kicker. More power, more accuracy. Small as our punter. He'll probably get a lot more play. In terms of athletes, we didn't lock down any. Quarterbacks on the roster. Oh, boy. So, Cobbs is clearly just a quarterback. Joseph Cummings, our now senior quarterback, is clearly just a quarterback. Alex Edwards, also another new recruit. Again, simply a quarterback. John Harris, I mean, we got a lot of guys at uh, the quarterback position now. Jamal Anthony from Hackensack, New Jersey. Yeah, no dual position opportunities for him. Stevie Gibson. Honestly, Gibson's almost as good as a running back as he is quarterback because he's not a very good quarterback. <laughs> How many running backs do we have? Quite a few. Honestly, Steve Gibson, we might as well just move over to running back for the hell of it. And then uh, David Coker is just trash. I'll just leave him there. Running backs, Darius Edmonds. Uh, you know, not bad as a wideout, but he's also five foot eight for God's sake. So that's that's not gonna happen. Uh, so really quickly, Edmonds is a uh, sixty-eight, and what was he? A uh, sixty-seven wide receiver. Just to keep track of that, uh, Derek Thomas, who transferred to us, is a better wide receiver. Than, uh, than running back. Again, Thomas is a 
63 as a running back, but a 65 wide out. Antonio Jackson. Clearly just best set up as a running back. No questions there. Uh, Nick Evans. Clearly better as a running back. Steve Gibson, we just moved over. And then Josh Jackson is better as a wide out, but not by much. So I, mean, I guess there could be the argument to move Edmonds and Thomas over, but again, they don't really have the height. So we won't. Uh, for the most part, yeah, running back wise, we're going to be fine. Fullback wise, we do have Aaron Merriman, who's only a 68. Um, running back, he's a 69 rated tight end. But we do have Matt Irons there, so he can stay. And Adam Watson, the old fullback, I mean, we don't even necessarily need him. I don't even know where the hell we're going to put him. He can just stay there, I guess. We could, you know, redshirt him this year if we really wanted to. Or just play him. Doesn't really matter to me. I'd rather just get him off of the roster. Uh, wide receiver, John Parks, the transfer, 70 as a running back. It's not as if Edmonds is that bad, though. He's our top guy right now. And there's Barron. Same thing. Just leave as a wide receiver. Mike Goins, leave as a wide receiver. We don't have the tallest set of receivers. That's one thing I'm noticing. Jason Jones, Perry slightly better, not by much. Zach Davis, now Zach Davis is just outright better as a running back than as a, a wide out. And he's got a little bit of a little bit of height to him, but that's about it. Hmm. There's a there's a lot to change here. To be honest, especially if we just wanted to get people into their best overall role, you know, which might be how we handle it. So, you know what, here, really quickly, let's move Thomas over. Again, Edmonds was in his best spot. You're in your best spot. Because we have so many players signed now. To be honest, we're going to move Gibson back over. And Evans is in his best spot. We're going to move some people over to running back, I'm sure. Again, Merriman is a 75. Is definitely in his best spot. Watson's in his. Parks is good. Let's see. Go oh, good! Hey, still fine. You. Tic Tac Jack, appreciate the follow. How are you, man? Feels like Cobbs is just waiting for a big school to come in and it just didn't happen. Yeah, no, that's definitely the feeling, is that uh, the, the school he wanted to go to never showed up. <laughs> the school he wanted to go to never showed up, so he settled for being a gigantic fish in a small pond. Uh, Zach Davis, yeah, better running back than wide receiver, so we'll move him over. Josh Jackson, fine where he is. Johnson's a better running back. I said we have so many running backs and uh, and wideouts now. It's pretty ridiculous. And again, we're still stuck with a lot of the dudes that started on this roster. It's just a 58 running back compared to a 49 wideout. We're gonna have a lot of running backs now on this team. Luis Williams and Jonathan Moore. A lot of wide receivers, a lot of running backs. Uh, tight end wise, Matt Irons. Actually, his best overall is at running back. That's pretty surprising. Might be the case for everybody, though. Yeah, it's not. I'm just going to put people where their best overall happens to be and just see what the roster looks like. Craft is good where he is. You have any defensive ability? Most of these guys don't. Unless you're an athlete, you're not going to have that transition ability. And then Greg Johnson's pretty much good where he is. So, I mean, the tight end position, we have an extreme lack of depth. 
Irons is now tied. I mean, it'd be nice kind of have a, a power back and a speed back, though. Uh, let's see, Mr. Grigsby, 68 center. Obviously, this is just going to be the case where a lot of these guys are uh, going to be higher rated at center. It's easier to be higher rated at center. I want to see who the best happens to be, though. No problem moving everybody over. Just move them back. Gets us a look at how many old linemen we actually have, too. So, Justin Thomas, Brandon Barrett. Yeah, everyone's obviously better at center. And then Witherspoon. Okay. So, the highest rated dudes are the ones that we're going to move out. So, Justin Thomas uh, at a 71 for his next highest position. Beck is a 68, no matter where you play him. Uh, let's move. Hold on really quickly. So Quarterback-wise, Cobbs. I don't know if he's a lefty or a righty. Honestly, it doesn't say. Hmm. All right. Let's move Thomas to left tackle. Beck gets moved to left guard. Barrett gets moved to right tackle. Grigsby gets moved to right guard. And then from there, we just need the depth. So our O line's actually not going to be that bad. We actually did lose some decent members of the O line. Left tackle for you. Left guard for you. Oh boy, he drops down to a 61. Oh god. Tom, what's going on? Took me a second to realize what that name was. What's happening, buddy? Hey, guard, and then Manson can go tackle. So, hey, our O-line's not incredible. There is a real lack of depth, and I think next year that has to be a targeted focus is to improve the O-line. Uh, defensive line. All right, so Moore can play anywhere. Beverly can play anywhere. You can play anywhere. Henderson's better at DT. Marquis Stewart, new recruit, better at DT. Nelson can play anywhere. Williams is slightly better there. And Ross is slightly better there. Catcher, it's an addicting game, man. Especially the uh, the way the recruiting phase works in this game. Like it, for as tedious as it can seem, man, is it addicting. I do absolutely adore this game. The overall DT. Can Thompson play linebacker? Not as well. Washington could play linebacker, but he's also slow as shit. It's not much of a drop there for Stewart. Williams has a slight drop. Parks has a bigger drop. I'm trying to see if there's anybody who doesn't drop off by all that much, if at all. Okay. So we really need people on that right-hand side. So, Washington definitely staying defensive tackle. Thompson's definitely staying as well. He drops off by three. Stewart only drops off by one. We'll move him back. Williams, same thing. Parks falls off big time. Move Ross over. Bush falls off by two. We'll leave him there. Henderson only falls off by one. Garcia falls off by three. All right, so the uh, I mean the defensive line. I mean you got Josh Moore, who's a senior, next to Marquis Stewart, one of our new additions, and then defensive tackles Robert Washington, Cedric Thompson. It's not bad at all. Two brand new additions for us. Now linebacker wise, of course it's always the question of are these guys going to be better on the defensive end of things? But most of the uh, defensive ends we had weren't any good at playing linebacker. That dude's just as good as a middle linebacker, so we'll move him over there. Tougher to find that spot. Same for Perez, leave him there. Frazier can stay. Tompkins is better on the outside. 
oddly enough. Albert's fine. We're just gonna have a rather crowded roster. Williams on the outside. Alexander to the middle. Chad Love. Just all about Chad Love, you know. All right, linebackers are set. I mean, Javon Young is not great, but in the middle, Martin Perez, Stanford Alexander. You got David Williams on the outside. And then corners. Let's see who we have here. Let's see what we got. In terms of highest rated dudes, we might as well just leave you there. Move you over to safety. Leave you at corner. You over to safety, Cedric Broussard. And then Dominique Beverly. Got some super low overall guys here though, damn. All right, so Logan Johnson, definitely stays at free safety. Nick Baker, definitely stays. Michael Perry, stays for the moment. Actually for Perry, it was only a one point drop to move the corner. Johnson's a two, depending on where we move him. Same for Terrell Lewis. Zach Ryan's a one point drop to move over there. Clint Lewis, two point drops. Aaron Carter, two point drops. Cedric Broussard, move back to corner. We already looked at Aaron Carter and Dominique Beverly. Should be fine, strong safety. Bradley's good. Zach Ryan's fine, Antoine King is fine, and Kyle Gaddis is good. So right now we only have four listed uh, corners, but obviously like we have the depth at safety that people can just slot over depending on the overall. So we're good. I mean the highest rated players on our team, two brand new recruits in Robert Washington and Kenneth Cobbs. Just beautiful, you know, just absolutely beautiful. A couple of 75s now. This is going to be a significantly better team. I want to get to the training results, see what type of improvement we have. I guess ideally we'd get to the stage where it's like, hey, we're set for the next season before calling it a night. But, I mean, yeah, dude, we just brought in a four-star recruit. It's nuts. So our off-season training results. Calvin Simon, our senior kicker, now up to an 80. Get some other improvements here. Logan Johnson, Nick Baker, Justin Thomas. I mean, look at these improvements, too. Big time plus fives. And again, these are all players who are already here and not new recruits. A ton of people just stepped up in a big time way. This team won two games last season. They lost two games to FCS teams. Yeah, I don't think we're going to lose those games this year if we uh, have them on our schedule. So we have to cut uh, nine players here. I think quarterback-wise, obviously Cobbs is our guy. We can't redshirt Cummings. You got John Harris who can't be redshirted either, which means I can break the promise to redshirt Edwards and Anthony, which means really Steve Gibson and David Coker can absolutely be cut. So I'm sorry to one Steve Gibson. And one David Coker out of Mount Pleasant, Tennessee, but you two are gone. Running backs. Oh boy, we can't redshirt like anybody. We got Antonio Jackson as a senior. He's the only one we could redshirt, for God's sakes. It's one, two, three, four. God, so Zach Davis, 65 overall senior, who's already been redshirted. He's an easy cut. I think the sophomore Sean Morse is also an easy cut just because, again, we can't redshirt him. I think these three lower dudes who just can't sit out, I mean, they're the easy guys to take off of this roster. So, Sean Morse, we're going to get rid of you. Torian Johnson and Jonathan Moore. So, again, we'll redshirt Antonio Jackson this season and run the other four. Uh, fullback wise, pretty straightforward. We're not going to redshirt Merriman, so we'll just cut Adam Watson. Since he cannot be redshirted. Or not. Apparently it would drop us below the fullback limit. I uh, can't really afford to cut a wide out. Certainly nobody on the O-line. 
Uh, big question as to who we want to cut here. We got to get rid of three more people. I guess safeties are a pretty safe bet, pun intended. Uh, Aaron Carter as a senior. He can be redshirted though. Clint Lewis can't be. So we'll go ahead and get rid of him. And that affected my New Hampshire pipeline apparently. Uh, but we'll also get rid of Beverly. I don't see why that would have uh, affected our pipeline, but I guess, you know, too few players. Which we'll work on it. Um, we'll also cut Jesse Boyd. It's a junior who was already redshirted. It's only a 55. So there we go. That gets us down to 70. Pretty much no regrets over anybody that we cut. Brings us over to custom conferences. We're not going to take ourselves uh, into a higher conference for uh, a while until it would like make sense from a political standpoint. You know, like a real life scenario to actually do that. I just can't wait to see what this team looks like from an overall perspective, you know? Year. Hey, an improvement's an improvement, though, Frankie. I'll take, oh, I'll take that you. slight improvement. Bobby, thank you for the follow, man. All right, so again, all of that is good. We advance to the preseason. I want to get this team set up. I want to sort out the red shirts. Figure out what we're going to be. Monkey dude, by the way, are you still around? I'm intrigued at the uh, the word here. Does it ever feel weird talking to yourself on stream? Uh, no, it doesn't, because I've been talking directly to people. <laughs> All right, so as mentioned, we're gonna break the promise uh, to Edwards and Anthony. We're gonna redshirt both of them. It's not a major loss if we lose them. That way, it's Cobbs, Cummings, and Harris. So, if he wants to transfer, I don't really care. Uh, same thing for Anthony. Running backs. Again, the only one to get redshirted is Antonio Jackson. Fullback-wise, we're not going to redshirt Merriman, so we'll carry two fullbacks. Um, hate to do it, but Jason Jones, we're going to break that promise. And Nate Bain, we're going to break that promise and redshirt you two. We can carry six wideouts. Tight end wide is nobody to redshirt. Nobody to redshirt on the O-line. We don't have the depth uh, to really get away with it. Uh, defensive end, Jason Beverly. Hate to break a promise to you, but we can. And, uh... Actually, you know what? Looking back at the O-line here, this allows us to carry three quarterbacks, four running backs, two fullbacks, Six wideouts. It's one, two. We can't get rid of Beck, so three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I can't really redshirt anybody there. So Beverly's definitely got to sit. Jerron Williams can take a seat. I can't redshirt anybody there. I can technically redshirt Javon Young. It'll break a promise, but I don't really care. And the middle linebacker, Martin Perez, Frazier, Stanford Alexander. I know you were a, a junior transfer, but uh, we're going to break that promise too. And redshirt you. Let's see if we can just get away with it. Corners, we can't redshirt anybody. Oh boy. Uh, honestly, it's a really good idea to redshirt Nick Baker this year. So let's see, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So I hate to say that Roddy Bradley. Gonna get red shirted, but somebody has to. What if it's Aaron Carter? It's one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh honestly I'm gonna break the promise to Bradley, so it's one, two, three. Actually mm. Yeah, well, we won't red shirt Bradley. I need extra uh Extra depth for corners, I just remembered. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, six, and then one, one, two, three, four. 
I take a red shirt off of somebody. It's gonna be Carter. All right, I think we are good. This team is basically set up, and if we go to ye old depth chart, and again, having Cobbs now as our quarterback, two low 70 rated running backs, three uh, low 70 rated wideouts, which isn't that bad. Tight end wise, uh, the depth is a disaster. <laughs> the O-line's okay. It's still a very rough team that needs a lot of work. But I don't hate where we're at. And if we look at our schedule here, play Washington State, Vanderbilt, Tennessee, Duke, the FCS teams. Uh, can we add anything? So, I mean, we could sit here and play anybody that we wanted to. I'm trying to remember all the teams, <laughs> all the promises I made about, yeah, hey, we'll play here, we'll play here. I think the big thing would be to take out the FCS teams and play, you know, actual options here. Even if said actual options would kick the shit out of us. Had one for California. And New England States makes uh, a lot of sense too. I do agree that we had a, uh, a California team or a California state. So yeah, we'll go with San Diego State. Play down the road. Can I still see the promises? I can't. Unfortunately. Go back to red shirt. Okay, here we go. No, so I can uh, I can still make the presumption over who I would have promised things to. So Merriman definitely got to play a game in Connecticut. Cobbs ideally we'd play in North Dakota. I guess I can see it from a different menu, but it's fine. Thompson we should play uh, in New Hampshire, which I can't really do. John Small again Connecticut. Need to play a game in Washington State. Connecticut again. Vermont. I don't really think I can play in Vermont either. Uh, Canada, I certainly can't play there. Vermont, Connecticut, New Hampshire. New Jersey, but I never promised this guy anything. Vermont. Washington, which I don't need because I redshirted him. Connecticut. Vermont, Maine. Connecticut. Nick Evans, I don't recall. No, he was here already because he was redshirted last year. Okay, I think we're good. I mean, outside of maybe some junior transfers. So if we go to custom schedules again. We know we play Connecticut. It's on the road, so that's perfect. Um, can I get a game in North Dakota? California, it turns out I didn't need. We're looking at North Dakota, New Hampshire, Washington, and Vermont. And uh, there's no real options there. I'm trying to think of who an easier uh, team would be. We'll head on down to the Dome and play the uh, old Raging Cajuns. Yeah, there's no North Dakota teams. There's no New Hampshire team. There's no Vermont team. The only thing I can really do is say, hey, let's play in Washington. If it's an option. Uh, which uh, isn't looking likely. I'm going to put that to open. I can't change that. Can't change that. Can't change that. Can't change that. Can I get it? Oh, that's right. Washington State is on the schedule. All right, perfect then. So yeah, that's all we can do then in terms of promises. Um, so yeah, I mean, the question is like week one. Do we schedule a particular game here? We could play a team like Marshall who would probably kick the hell out of us. Florida Atlantic or Buffalo. 
Buffalo. We'll host Buffalo week one. Got to go to Washington. Uh, I can host Vanderbilt. I was going to say, is there uh, a limit on the amount of home games I can have? The answer is apparently no. I do want to schedule out the FCS teams. I want to actually play somebody. Turns out I could just outright play Washington. Uh, let's take on UAB. Wyoming, Western Kentucky. Uh, try Western Kentucky, I guess. Western Michigan, Virginia Tech. There isn't really. I mean, BC would probably kick the hell out of us, but it'd be pretty fun to play them. It's funny, the way we have our schedules set up right now, it's pretty much in blocks, right? Buffalo, week off. Four games, two weeks off, and then just a crap load of games. I think we'll uh, we'll take out this game against Lafayette and uh, change it up a little bit. Let's add another game here. By no means should we be good, right? Well, add UNLV. All right, so let's see. We have two home games, one road game. So, two and two. Let's go to BC. So, yeah. Road game, home game, home game, road game. So two, two, three, three, four, four. Uh, uh, okay, uh, that should do it. Even amount of home and uh, road games. I mean, the strength of schedule is still an F. But, uh, you know, getting a lot more games in there. Honestly, Vanderbilt might kick the hell out of us. Maybe. What if we play Florida Atlantic in that one? Tennessee would definitely kick the shit out of us. I have no desire to get my ass kicked by them. We gotta play Tulane. We gotta play Tulane, for sure. All right. I feel like that's good. I mean, again, it gives us a really busy schedule against some uh, beatable teams, but not complete pushovers in theory like the FCS teams. And there's nobody that's necessarily going to kick the ever-loving hell out of us. You know, we're not playing... Well, in terms of, like, a, a ranked team or something like that. So. I'm, uh... I'm feeling kind of optimistic, maybe? Possibly? Potentially? I don't know, man. We'll see what this looks like by the end of it. The Tug Bowl. Tug Lane and UMass. Oh, the two teams that we have controlled. Oh, damn. It's gonna be emotional. <laughs> As the great... Oh, God. Vinnie Jones once said... I'm the juggernaut, bitch. But he also said it's going to be emotional. And it is. So with that, I think uh, I think we're good. I want to take a look at the team. Obviously, kind of look at where we're projected to be. But obviously, we're significantly better. We brought in four-star recruits. It's a good time. It's a damn good time. I can't complain right now. Aside from the load times. That's the one thing that kind of sucks. <laughs> Alright, there we go. So we start off a season against Buffalo. I again forgot to fill out the recruitment board. Because I always forget to do that at the start of a season. Uh, but whoever was on the board for us, it, it's fine. It is what it is. I don't really feel too bad about missing out on some coaching time there. I always I always forget to do that, though. Fuck. I'm actually kind of mad. Uh, preseason polls. The question is, how far down are we on the preseason poll? We're dead last. So we've gone from a 60 overall team to a 67. But we are still dead last. Uh, I don't believe we're the lowest rated team. At least we're tied for it. 
Yeah, I mean, we're better than Tulane. <laughs> no, uh, no respect for the Minutemen. But I think pretty soon with an 80 overall quarterback, they will learn. We went up by seven overall points this season. <sighs> and we're going to kick the hell out of Buffalo in a parking lot to start the next one.